Anyways, in order to keep Muhammad, the last Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, yes, Jesus will come back. By the way, I don't believe this. But he says he will come back in a non-prophetic capacity. Brother, what type of nonsense is this? In my, in my understanding, I even made a video, I think, yesterday. I said, essentially, what you're saying is to keep Muhammad, the last Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you're disrespecting Jesus. Because some of his followers, they say he's no longer a prophet, right? Which I think that's just disrespect, blatant disrespect. And who are you to take away his prophethood, to spit on his prophethood, right? It, one, isn't he supposed to, like, you know, uh, I, I, uh, disestablish Jizya and yeah. then uh, and then break the cross or something yeah, yeah, and then yeah, kill all the pigs. Break, break, uh, the pig, how yeah. can you how can you do all that if you're not a prophet? <laughs> you have to ask him. <laughs> Hi there, welcome to Religious Insight. And in this video, Muslim questioned Jesus being God. Was his glory given? Let's find out the truth from this video. <laughs> so hard. In the same way that you would agree that there's never a time when Allah is not Allah right despite any action that he takes within the universe or, or within any context you have in the quran or the hadiths there's never a time when jesus being the very word and wisdom of god the logos is never god any of the indications of him being given glory or shedding his glory these are to do with the idea of him being incarnate in the form of a human it is not speaking about the divine glory that never goes away because by nature he always has his divine glory because like you said before in the hypostatic union these are two natures a uncreated divine nature and a created human nature existing in a single person so the single person is the means by which any action is taken and that person being both human and divine can never not be divine in the same way that from the point of the incarnation, he can never not also have the human nature. So there's never a time when he's speaking and suddenly the divine nature is turned off. Mm -hmm. It's always active. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you said God is always God. With that, I agree. God is always God. 100%. Yes. It's impossible for God to not be God at one time. That would be logical. God can do everything. I, I disagree. It's, he, can't do, he can't stop being God, for example. Uh, we so we say, uh, we, we, well, the way we phrase that is God can do everything that's logically possible. So yeah, if there's yeah. anything illogical, like, you know, making a rock, stop existing, yeah. create a second God, we yeah. don't hold to that. Yeah, yeah. We say, we basically, we say the same. We say Allah can't do anything which does not befit his majesty. For example, creating a rock which he can't lift. That's impossible. That's different, however. So the, when you say Allah can't do anything that befits his majesty, you're not necessarily saying that um, there aren't things that are illogical that Allah can't do. Because Allah's majesty, to me, appears to be something that you guys just sort of like spin up on the fly. Yeah, I, I see where you're coming from because the Ghair Ahmadi Muslims do they do this a lot as well. I've seen this, but essentially, essentially, I'm saying the same thing. I'm saying every anything which is illogical for God to do, this would be what contradicts His Majesty. So you can't do anything which is illogical, basically. Okay, so for example, there's nothing illogical about taking on a, um, a human flesh. Okay, now I, have a question, I have a question about this. You said God so is always God. I agree. Can he do that? But, Just out of curiosity. Uh, taking, taking off, limiting himself, I believe this will go against his majesty. But also, well, you said he you wouldn't be about, about mm -hmm. what you said earlier. You said that there was never a time that Jesus just immediately his divinity stopped he always had the divine glory so the question uh, this was your response right he, you said he always had this glory and yes. he's always god so my question to this would be why is he praying to the father in john 17 5 to get this glory if he already possesses it so effectively the idea there is that it's not that he is um requesting glory that he doesn't possess but he is don't forget that when we we have the actions of jesus we also hold that for example he is praying not only because he's, he is um, one of a multi-personal God who is three and obviously we believe our God is personal so he can communicate with not only us but also the other two members of the Trinity but also that he is teaching us how to pray essentially he's showing us his sunnah if you will yeah, yeah so when, when when he is mentioning the glory um that he's asking the father for this is not in essence of the divine glory but this is like, like the glorification that he could show to the disciples that he will then give to them also to cast out demons in his name i think i think this would be divine glory sorry go on yeah, this, so this this is where this is where um like this is my understanding of it because how 
it, obviously he is requesting he is requesting something right mm -hmm. um and this is talking about when he says this is the glory that he had with the father before the world was mm -hmm. we see we see him receive this when he is exalted remember jesus says i came down from heaven mm -hmm. right he said i was with the father and I came down from heaven. And he, a lot of times y'all, you, you see him say stuff like, man, how much longer do I have to be here with you guys? And uh, how much longer do I have to endure this with you, right? And you disbelieving people in adulterous generation and yada, 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 <laughs> right? And he says, where I'm going to some of the people, where I'm going, you can't come. You, you, you can't come, you're, you, you know, you're of your father, the devil type stuff. Anyway, so this glory that we see Jesus is asking for is it's, it's, it's not, like um, his he lost his divine nature. No, but it has to do with his 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 majesty and his um, you know his his just his royalty, his heavenly royalty and exaltation, right? So the Bible talks about how Jesus, even though he was in the form of God, right, very by very nature God, the word morphe, um, he's by very nature God. He did not count equality with God something to hold on to. But the Bible says that he, but he emptied himself, made himself nothing of no reputation, right? Made himself of no reputation and took on the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men. So he, he gave up that reputation, set that reputation aside, that exaltation, he set that aside and By took on the form of a servant. Mm -hmm. So then what we see here, we see he set that. That's the glory he's talking about that he set aside, that exaltation, that reputation, that 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 uh, majesty that he had. He set it aside for a while and then now he's asking for it back. He's Correct. In, in so, yes. So so when he set this aside, so in the beginning, there was God, there was Jesus, spirit and the father. And all of them obviously had the same divine glory being before the creation. Then during the creation, when he's incarnated into flesh, he's asking for this back which he set aside meaning that during this specific time he does not possess it because he set it aside no said, oh, bless me with this back so the well, setting me... aside is yeah. simply coming in the form of a man that's what we mean so for example it would be like a king who is a king by his um by his appointment stepping down from his throne and then maybe for example uh, walking the streets of his kingdom as, as a beggar but then ultimately his identity is still one of a king but then his station suddenly, as perceived by his uh, fellow citizens of his kingdom, is now nothing more than just a beggar. So ultimately, he always possesses his kingly glory. However, he does not showcase it when he's in the form of a beggar. Similarly, the word of God, Jesus, always possesses his divine glory, but does not showcase it um fully when he is in the form of a man because if he had for example it would be impossible for anyone to actually even gaze upon his face you have this idea that allah's radiance can destroy creation yeah. if the veil wasn't there yeah, for, yeah, so example, imagine Martha. yes so imagine if jesus walked around the earth in its full divine glory uh, we, we would also hold that his the radiance of his face would also destroy creation as mm -hmm. far as i could see so effectively okay. that is what is being talked about there the glorification is not just about the, the divine uh, nature of being suddenly returned to him it is it is the, the glorification of status because john 17 5 says glorify me in your presence with the glory i had with you before the world was yeah and had had this is yeah, the, the the point i'm trying to say that had is past tense meaning that during the presence he does not have it after the prayer has been fulfilled and accepted in the future we will have it back as he had it in the beginning before he was but, incarnated correct yeah it's it's correct. but but yeah but the the difference is is the what well, so Dawood is expressing the station right it like the if when the king comes down right mm. walks amongst his people as a beggar it doesn't mean that he himself, I, you know, identically is not king anymore, mm -hmm. just that he set that status aside for a second to, you know, do what he do to fulfill the role that he that he took on. on this purpose, reminds right? me of you asked. I told you, right, that I spoke to Anand Rashid and mm. uh, he keeps saying in order to keep Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the last prophet, he keeps saying Jesus will come back. 100% he will come back. I challenge him to prove this, by the way. He made up verses and I've, I've clipped this on my account. He made up verses to try back this. I challenge him to show this verse. I challenge his son Musa Adnan as well on Twitter all the time. Show me this verse your dad claimed. Anyways, in order to keep Muhammad, the last prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, yes, Jesus will come back. By the way, I don't believe this, but he says he will come back 
in a non-prophetic capacity brother what type of nonsense is this in my in my understanding i even made a video i think yesterday i said essentially what you're saying is to keep muhammad the last prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you're disrespecting jesus because some of his followers they say he's no longer a prophet right which i think that's just disrespect blatant disrespect and who are you to take away his prophethood to spit on his prophethood right Number isn't one, he two. supposed to like you know uh like uh disestablish jizya and yeah. then uh and then break the cross or something yeah, yeah, and then yeah, kill all the break, pigs break, how, the pig, how yeah. can you how can you do all that if you're not a prophet <laughs> you have to ask him <laughs> and <laughs> some of him, well, Adnan Rashid himself he says that he will come back and he uses these words he, he uses these words i don't know what they mean you can ask him but he says he will come back in a non-prophetic capacity so what i understood from this which i don't know if this is what he means or not because they're never straightforward for example you don't know which sect adnan rashid is from you don't know which sect hamza then is from they hide this they're not proud of their beliefs i'm ahmadi alhamdulillah I say here probably i'm ahmadi right they don't say what they believe in because when you quote them their scholars they can't say anything uh, hamza then said to god logic the hadith is made up because it doesn't have a number you show him uh, hamza look this is your scholar what is he saying he's saying the exact opposite right so this is why the, these people they hide their beliefs which is mm -hmm. very uh, cowardice right but yeah. anyways the, the point was i said i said in my video that what you're saying is when you say he's coming back in a non-prophetic capacity you're saying he's coming back like a phone without battery like a car without fuel why what made you say that his prophetic capacity vanished from where do you have this yani anyways well, anyways it's, well, look, uh, uh, we got we got other guests that want to come on yeah. but share. just quickly i wanted to speak yeah. about the basilidus if you don't mind just quickly wow uh, what speak about what the basilidus heretic group basilidus, but, i believe simon but, of Sarai was basilides, basilides? yes yes yes, yes. Bring, bring 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 that next time bring next time oh, I, yeah, that. Uh, okay. I appreciate you coming well, on uh, the, just, just, so, just. I guess the last thing on that point is, the in the same way that in Islam you have very strict criteria as to what makes a Muslim. If anybody denies the crucifixion, they're automatically not a Christian. Uh, yeah. But by the, I, I don't know if you know this or not. By the way, we believe as Ahmadis that Jesus was on the cross. But was not crucified we don't believe he was killed on the cross but we believe he was on the cross so that's also well, one of, this is why i was going to mention the basilidus inshallah next time we'll get to this this is why i was going to mention them yeah, we'll, simply yeah, we'll to be on the cross that. means you're crucified that doesn't mean they, you have to die but that's, yeah that's what some of them say i say no you have to be crucified meaning you have to die you have your corpse you, you know in deuteronomy the corpse who's hanged uh the, sorry, the there are people who have survived crucifixion and they were still crucified no, that's an attempt of crucifixion, I would say. But we'll get to this next time. That's, a, that's uh, like attempted murder, crucifixion right? Crucifixion isn't a type of death, but okay, sure. It's, it's a, a type of death, is, is, is my understanding. It's a type of death. But yeah, it was, it was a pleasure speaking to you, uh, Daoud right. and uh, Avery. Take care. Take care, man. Take no care. Worries, man. Hi, welcome back. I believe you enjoyed watching this video. And I also believe you were able to learn something new watching this video. Let us know your views about this video in the comment section. And also don't forget to share our videos with your friends and your family. If you have not subscribed, subscribe, hit the notification button to be notified each time we post new and engaging videos like this. When a child is starved of love, they will cling to anything that is in semblance of love. That is the same thing with knowledge of the truth. When you don't have access to the truth, you will accept anything that resembles the truth. That is exactly what Islam offers, the semblance of the truth and not the truth. John chapter 17 verse 5 says that, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I think the understanding is the problem with this text from which this Muslim guys try to bring this argument from. I think he lacks simple explanation of what this text was trying to explain. Jesus said, Glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. This means that Jesus stripped himself of his own glory before coming into this world and he is requesting for the glory, not because he has lost his divine nature. If you read the whole chapter, you will notice that he did that to help the faith of his disciples to understand his person and his nature or who he is. Imagine if God chose to come down in his fullness. Remember what happened at the Mount of Transfiguration in Matthew chapter 17 verse 1 to 2 where the text says that after six days Jesus took with him Peter, James and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And chapter 2 said he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun 
and his clothes became as white as the light. So imagine for a second if Jesus came in his fullness of glory. Nobody would have come close to hear or listen to the message he had for the world. People would have been running away from him because they wouldn't have stood the brightness of his eyes or the, the, the glistering of his clothes. So people would run, definitely run away from him. Guys, let us know your views about this video in the comment section and if you have not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe hit the notification button to be notified each time we post new and fascinating videos like this thank you for watching see you in our next video